Hello, amazing atheist. The practitioner here. Bachelor of Science student, chemistry major, mathematics minor, uh, magician, parapsych uh, parapsych researcher, technical uh, technical agnostic, and Fortean skeptic. Um, I'm going to uh, reply to a couple of things here. Number one of which you said uh, that if any of these people were truly rational, uh, like these hyper rationalists, that maybe they would realize that it was uh, it was not it was irrational to be so rational if they were going to be hit in the uh, uh, hit in the face with baseball bats. Um, the fact that you actually mentioned that and then said that uh, it would be irrational for them to do so, um, that's what's called an appeal to force fallacy. And uh, the rationality is not for uh, the irrationality is not on their point for trying to hold fast to rationality, but uh, the irrational point would be on your end if you actually uh, wanted. Um, uh, if you actually tried to uh, bash them in the face um, to try to get them to stop being, uh, basically to enforce your idea that it's a bad that uh, that it's a bad thing, or that they are, cr or to try, or to try to enforce your idea that they are being cretins. I.e., it would be like Jesus freak trying to say God wants this to do ha to happen uh, to um, to you know to trying to push his ideas on you. Um, it would be the exact same thing. Now, of course, I know you're saying this in humor, so. Um, you know, I'm assuming you're taking this entirely in jest, um, and you're right. For the bulk, for the bulk of the things, um, humanity are not uh, humans are not rational animals. We are, however, the best rational. We are the we are, however, the ba best species at rationalizing our behavior. Like you know, rationalizing after the fact. Um, even though it turns out the uh, uh, half the time, even uh, that's often based on critical thinking fallacies too. Now, I would say that there are probably, um, at least speaking as an Aspie, and most of the other Aspies I know, um, I wouldn't say we're more rational, but they, I would say, and, I, and I'll, bet you, I'll bet you dollars to dimes, dollars to donuts, that there are probably a large chunk of people out there who would, um, who would uh, fall under this category. Um, there are probably a lot of people who, you know, you know, people are not necessarily rational off the bat, but... And I would I would disagree with you on one point, uh, and this is just as a as a skeptic and agnostic myself. If you probably told someone, uh, you know, if if they were in a uh, rational frame of mind at the time, like say for example, if you had had them rationally thinking about one issue or what have you, right? And then you brought the subject around to uh, an area where they were holding an irrational belief. And if you could prove to them uh, or explain in great detail as to um, as to why as to why their belief is irrational and present a logical alternative, um, they may not accept you right off the bat. But granted, they would probably at least think about what you had to say. They would probably go, "Hmm, there's some there's some food for thought." You know, they would probably at least uh, they probably would at least uh, you know stop and actually uh, they would at least probably stop in their tracks and at least think about what you had to say, if nothing else. Um, uh, the reason I say this is uh, again, I don't know. Maybe neurotypicals aren't. Maybe most neurotypicals are not like this. But um, the few that I do know, and most of the Aspies I do know, um, again, fellow, uh, you know, most of my relatives, uh, other fellow Aspies I've uh, you know I've met. Um, we are wired um, because of the fact that um, we have very uh, great difficulty communicating on an emotional level, um, largely because of the fact that we can't read emotional cues, body language, tone of voice, uh, that sort of thing. We find, um, you know, and because of the fact of, of how our brains are, 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 are wired, just, you know, just because of the way our brains are wired, we're not necessarily more rational than other people, but we do find that we like logic better. We do find that we, uh, we, we find, um, if you will, referring to your video, um, uh, oh God, I've forgotten the rant, uh, 25 cent abortions or something like that, dollar abortions. The one where, um, the one where you're talking about, about people uh, not being happy. Well, we are happy a little bit more with logic and we're uncomfortable with emotion. And I will admit this, I am uncomfortable uh, in dealing with emotion. And um, largely because of the fact that, um, I don't know, I guess, um, Call it, to go, try, call it trying to be the, the ultimate ideal of what science and uh, critical thinking and, ra and, uh, and humans are. Well, you know, let me say, let me say this much, um, and, and this is just my own personal opinion. Take it for what it's worth. But as humans, we have the capability of abstract thought. We are the, um, we are perhaps the most, in, um, we are perhaps the most, um, we are the top of the food chain, uh, pretty much. We are the most adaptive, um, the most imaginative, and perhaps the most, um, well, I wouldn't say necessarily the most rational, but I would say that rationality does play a large precept into our brains. We would not be able to uh, hyper-conceptualize and, and, uh, and use trains of logic to go out to such wide concepts as we have 
uh, we wouldn't even be trying to chase a theory of everything, you know, uh, like the like the ones like those guys are at, uh, at CERN uh, at CERN with the uh, new uh, large uh, large hadron collider testing string theory. If we didn't have um, some sort of capability to logically extrapolate, we wouldn't have mathematics if we didn't have that as a large part of our brain set. Um, you know, and the fact that we have this capability, along with uh, imagination, creativity, um, you know, a lar along with a large chunk of these, and not all of these are emotionally based. Uh, a lot, um, some of the best science fiction writers, Robert Heinlein, for example. Um, yes, he brought in a lot of uh, emotion to uh, living up the story, but large chunks of his uh, of his fiction, which was what made his work so interesting, was that he took what science was there of the day and then extrapolated forward five, ten, fifteen hundred years into the future. In some cases, he only uh, went by a couple of decades, and in one particular uh, novel, Space Cadet, he was able to, um, through just basic mathematics and what was known as science at the time, he was able to predict in intricate detail the cell phone before it ever came out. I mean, um, Jules Verne was able to predict uh, the rough dimensions of a submarine, which uh, are actually similar designs and strength, uh, tensile strength now, of most nuclear submarines that are uh, uh, run by the U.S. Navy. Um, I mean, this is, you know... This extrapolative and logical capability of ours is is part of what um, is part of what drove us forward with uh, the capabilities of uh, of playwrights of science of you know I mean science was discovery but people still had to start asking the questions of hey this anomaly works here I wonder if it would go here and then from that hypotheses were uh, hypotheses were generated and new things were tested and then from that from new knowledge engineers uh, and science you know engineers and uh, and writers and other people you know uh, both from social dynamics and from from other data that they were getting in their daily lives they would start communicating they would start sharing ideas people would start extrapolating and that's where we got the first works of fiction from and later uh, you know where we've gotten so much of our technical innovation that we can now even have computers like uh, the ones you and I are talking on are communicating with here um so you know um i mean this is our capability so i guess my concern is that you know um granted i may be a little bit uncomfortable with emotion but i would say that um even if we aren't necessarily uh, rational animals um i would if anything um try to aspire hyper uh i would try to hyper aspire into uh bringing logic into as many points of my life as possible um, if only to um, if only to make my life that much more um, uh, if only to make sure that my decisions were that much more thorough um, to try to bring out the best possible benefit um, for any particular situation um, I mean for example uh, your healthier life let's take your cholesterol example well um, you know eggs have, are full of cholesterol I don't know whether I should eat them well what about this what are the ratios of cholesterol? How much cholesterol is harmful for you? Um, you know, uh, would um, would a granola bar be better? Um, what about possible preservatives in the granola bar? What about um, what about a third option? Uh, you know, uh, like like a vegetable. Like, hmm, I'm feeling like a carrot. You know, like, hmm, neither of these two sound uh, particularly good. However, broccoli would have the calcium, and I could have some soy with tofu to go along with that. I'll make a stir fry. You know, like. There are, you know, there's more options out there to, to, to narrow yourself to those two, which I know you weren't, would be a false dilemma um, to, uh, to, you know, to hyper say like, you know, like, oh, therefore it's got cholesterol. I mean, the thing is that um, a, a logical critical thinking mind will also be aware not only of, uh, you know, not only, and you're probably uh, equally aware, well aware of this as I am, that a logical critical thinking mind will not necessarily just work on a, lo a narrow pedantic logic from what info one has, but will also in the same mo but also at the same time question, okay, well, what knowledge don't I have on this issue? Where are my gray areas? Where do I need more information before I can make a decision? You know, and and with that becomes the inquiring mind. That's when people start asking questions. That's when people start trying to test stuff out to. Uh, um, you know, uh, start fighting struggles. And that's when, when people start uh, actually getting new information, they start telling it to someone else and go, hey, look at what I got. And then, uh, like you said in one of your other videos, which I just made a reply to as well, they go, uh, I don't know, like, what's good? What's the use of this to me? Um, for example, um, I've heard a lot of comments before from, uh, from uh, everyday people, even fellow skeptics, who said, what's the point of testing string theory? It's not going to put food on my table. And, you know, and I'm going, well, you know, if we don't figure out this sort of stuff, then we won't even have it around for it to, uh, to consider whether it may have a practical use or not somewhere down the line. You know, and, and this is where, uh, 
you know, and the thing is that I, I do think that hyperlogic does have a, a good useful point for it and trying to push for logic uh, along, with, um, along with asking the right questions and, and knowing where your gray spots are. Um, 